Hey, Composite Gloves here. And today we're gonna to be talking about mid-side processing. It's just as crazy as parallel processing. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you an example of why it matters first. So here I've got a signal, it's being mid-side split, but it's both going to the master. So that's all I'm doing, I'm not doing anything else. Let's go ahead and put reverb on the whole signal. We quickly notice that, hey, it's less punchy. We lose, it's just harder to define what's in the middle. Like what's, what's going on here? It sounds like a, a it just sounds weird. So well, it sounds like a reverb drum kit, um, drum fill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it only to the side signal, meaning information that is different between the two speakers and check it out. So it's a lot more clear, a lot more punchy and we can uh, understand, but we still get that sense of big space. So the takeaway is we can affect the side a ton more than the mid, at least in the context of reverb. I hope you can see where I'm going with this. You can do reverb, EQ moves, all sorts of things. So you can sort of demix even a full track by getting the side information separate from the mid information. Now the mid information is the information that both speakers share. So this left speaker and the right speaker, they have the same information. Now the side information is the information that is different. So it's different. The left speaker and the right speaker do not have the same information. And we have a way of extracting this. And I use the plugin Fruity Stereo Shaper. It allows me to do some cool things. There are other plugins that allow you to do stereo shaping uh, using various methods. And, but this one gives you a cool mixer matrix, which is really nifty. And we're gonna look at this mixer matrix. So let's go ahead and move this guy to channel. 56. All right, it's so on channel 56, and we're going to name this guy New Mid. And we are going to add a stereo, doo -doo 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 -doo, stereo shaper to it. Now, on our stereo shaper, we have this matrix, and this matrix means things. I know that's like pretty obvious, but like it's kind of a weird deal at first. So, first, let's take a notice of what these guys control, because by default, it pops up like this. Well, first, let's take this guy down, and if we play it, we notice that's our left channel. So like, oh, okay, this controls our left channel. And if we do the opposite, well, we'd expect this to control the right channel. We're like, okay, now the question becomes, what do these extra ones do? And then we say, well, let's lift this one up. This is, this is yellow, okay. We're like, hey, that comes out the right channel. But this is, what's going on here is, this is actually the left channel's information going out the right channel. So if we lift them both up, we get a mono signal on the left channel. So this guy controls how much of the left channel goes into the right channel. So this guy over here controls how much of the right channel goes into the left channel. You might be going, what on earth is this crazy matrix used for? It says that's complicated. And then we could even do, we could even pull things down. And so to demonstrate this, I'm gonna put this at normal and I'm gonna put this up. Well, if we pull this guy down, what it's gonna do is it's going to invert the polarity of the signal. So we're gonna take this down and now this guy is a, a phase, well, polarity inverted version of this guy. So that's really, really interesting, right? So if we pull it down, it just flips the waveform is what you can think of it as a polarity switch. So, okay, that's really cool. Now, what is this like? How can we use this? And what's really nifty about this is, because you might be saying these are some interesting options, they have this in-out difference. And we can use this in-out difference to output the difference. So information that is different between the two speakers can be output or after it goes through this matrix. So that means if we want to get the side signal out of this, we have to put it out. Now we could go through the process that you need to do this, but uh, they've got a preset and I really prefer the simpler option. So instead of diving in all that stuff, we're just going to go to the mid A side splitter preset. And you see it is now configured it so that it will automatically output it um, that there, it is configured it so that there will be the difference of the mid and the side for us without having to do a crazy amount of thinking. It's not that complicated, but I'm just going to keep it as simple as possible. So what we have is we have this going out now and we have this in out difference. What is, what does this mean? And well, if we do this now, our side is actually going out to the next channel over. So we'll name this one side. That's what the two means. And uh, is this thing on? It is mid side out difference. Oh, I forgot to side chain it. So what we have here is I you need to side chain it for this to work. So if I side chain it, it goes bam. So it's coming out 56. So we've side chained it. Now it will put it out of that channel. And we see it is now coming out of that channel. So that's really great. That is mid side. And right now if we solo that, we only get the side information. And if we do this, we only get the mid information. So that's really cool. If you want to hear what it would sound like over your phone, you could just come to the stereo separation knob, make it 100% uh, merged. And so it's mono. 
And that's what you would hear over your phone. So that's kind of a cool deal too. So now we can uh, affect these separately. And we've done it really simple. And we've simply used the difference between the two and sent it to this channel. So now we have our mid and our side. And now let's just say if we want to do some cool processing, well, okay, we've got our side information and we could parallel process our side information now like a whole bunch of times or whatever. Like you could you could go crazy here, but the, but the big point is we've split it apart and now you can just do so much more. You can add reverb. This is a great way to add reverb to vocals. You could try doing this with vocal doubles. You could try doing this with like flutes, clarinets, and just really take them out to the side. Maybe they're playing a legato passage in your new dubstep track or whatever. I don't know. Maybe you're making an orchestral dubstep track and that might be a cool thing you want to do. Like there's just so many freaking cool options versus uh, just regular one way. Something that we should note here is that there's a plugin that I've been pulling out a lot and uh, it has a mid and a side option on it. And if I have it on mid and put reverb on, guess what's gonna happen? Yeah, nothing, nothing, because it only looks at mid. So this automatically does it for you. So if you wanna add reverb to just the side, bang, now it's gonna look at the side. And now it added the reverb for us to the side. Like how freaking cool is that? So now you have a great plugin. So you don't even need to do this matrix to add reverb to the side, but maybe you want to EQ or do, or maybe do EQ, like you EQ the side, maybe like do something like that. Like maybe that's your dream EQ curve. Like, I don't know. But the point is uh, this thing has a mid side and it does it for you. So you can do that automatically. So you don't have to go through this trouble, but maybe you want to compress it. Maybe you just want to do different stuff to the side information. You can really get creative. So that's mid side processing, super useful for mixing, lots of cool things you can do and options. If for whatever reason you're having trouble getting the, maybe the space you want in your, your dead set on getting it to do it with the verb, maybe this is the answer. There's just lots of interesting uh, things. Uh, subscribe, support me on Patreon and have a blessed day.